Hello everyone, in today's video I would like to discuss something known as the Shadow DOM and how it can be used uh, for creating web components, basically like reusable components that you can uh, use on your website and your web app and things of that nature. So let's just go here and create a new file. We're gonna call it Shadow DOM. Maybe let's just hide this for now and just the usual stuff here. So I believe the reason it is called Shadow DOM is that it provides some sort of encapsulation mechanism. Uh, so basically uh, whatever you do inside that component is scoped to that component only so it doesn't affect the rest of your website because um, like in the old days where websites were um, smaller for example and not as complex as uh, today well it was easy to manage all the styles uh, and everything that went on on such a website or at least much easier but now you have like multiple sub pages multiple components here and there and it may be easier to run into some um, like naming conflicts even when it comes to styling with uh, CSS so uh, this is the concept of um, shadow DOM um, DOM st stands for document object model so uh, let's just dive into this and see it in action but there are probably multiple ways in which you can create uh, web components but what i like to do is i like to create like a template here maybe let's give it some id i'm gonna say my web component And let's just, uh, you know, create the basic structure of that component. Uh, so maybe let's have a class here. Uh, or maybe a button. Let's call it a click me button. You're gonna say click me and maybe here we'll have like some simple counter or simple count so count status so simple div starting at zero so these two HTML elements group together as a web component so that's what we have here Let's create a script here. I'm gonna say class my web component. So it's gonna extend or inherit from HTML element. So it's gonna have a parameterless constructor. First we're gonna um, initialize the base class and then we're gonna say uh, shadow root the concept of shadow root is uh, pretty important uh, it's basically a crucial part of this whole API the shadow DOM API and it helps you interact with the encapsulated content within the shadow DOM structure. So yeah, as I mentioned before, it helps you with uh, isolation, like isolating styles and some logic from the rest of your um, web app or your, your 
website or whatever it is that you're working on. So I'm going to say shadow root this attach shadow. And we're going to say mode. You can either say open or closed. In our case, it doesn't really matter. It's more about accessing this component from the outside, which one we want to really be doing, or, or accessing the shadow root of this component from the outside. So we won't really need it right now, but maybe let's just leave the usual mode here, which is open. So I'm going to say template content. We're going to grab this template by its ID. So I'll say document query selector. Add my web component and the content. Content. And then we're going to clone that node and append it to our shadow root. So uh, template content. Okay, so let's just do the basic stuff for now. And outside this uh, class, we can add this or define this custom element so that we can use it uh, on our website or here the web page that we're working on. We can say my web component. And we're going to pass this class here. So now hopefully if I go here and say my web component, we're going to see something soon. Let me just open this. Yeah, so you can see it here just with the basic formatting. So basically the idea is here that you going to click this and it's going to increment this counter. So just to uh, show some basic functionality. So as you can see, it's uh, usually something more complex that, than just one div or just one uh, HTML element. You can kind of group those things together uh, within this template, for example. Yeah, I like doing it the template way because uh, you can uh, define your styles here and it should be uh, reflected here and also um, it should look nicer in your code editor or ID because of the syntax highlighting. Uh, so let's just say maybe a host. A host in this case is like um, a pseudo element that refers to the component itself or the shadow host. Uh, so maybe let's just say background color. Um, let's find something here. Um, so this is the background color. Maybe add some padding as well. We can kind of see it. Here, um, maybe let's do display flex, but flex direction will be column wise. So something like this. Maybe just let's make it like kind of narrow maybe 100 pixels 
uh, let's say border radius 8 pixels mm, what else could we do here maybe also add some margin like 4 pixels alright so this is how it looks so far <clears throat> and then here we're gonna say count status and account status and let's say background color maybe this and border let's say one pixel solid black border radius maybe four pixels just some basic styling maybe let's increase its height a bit um, say uh, display grid so that we can easily center this inside that diff you can say place items center all right so i think that's good enough for now at least <laughs> not sure if we're going to come back to this but it looks uh, okay so now let's work on this counter thing oh, and by the way if you copy this over here you can see that we can have as many of those components as we want it's like a, actually like a template like a blueprint that you can use to uh, duplicate them as many times as you wish they are independent of uh, one another so maybe let's just add some uh, maybe let's just grab those elements inside uh, so it's constant and let's say count status say shadow root query selector I'm going to say count status and then constant click me button basically it's the same except for the name here the class name so we're just gonna attach an event and on click event to the the button here you say on click with an anonymous function and we're gonna say account status text content I'm gonna parse the old content to an integer And incremented by one. So now, as you click it, you can see that it's increasing the counter. Um, not sure if it work with. Oh, you have to parse it to an integer, but that's the idea. You can control them separately. And you can have as many of those components as you wish, as I said. So that's the basic idea. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial, that you found it useful. Where well, There are still many things to discuss in detail here, but I think that's good for, uh, for a start. So if you like this video, please um, hit that like button subscribe to my channel so I can continue making such videos and hope to see you next time. Bye.